Hey Kojaku, so we are here at PAX looking at the game Below by Cappy and I'm here with Nathan Vela and Jim Guthrie who are working on this game. So Nathan, tell us a little bit about Below. So Below is uh, inspired by roguelikes and it's a game about exploration, survival and discovery. So you just arrived at an island, uh, you're a lone small wanderer uh, and you've basically walked into the depths, and this is kind of where uh, Below begins. Okay. Uh, you have a sword and a shield, you can use your left trigger to hold your shield up, you can use the right trigger to swing your sword, you can hold your shield up and use your sword at the same time to kind of poke. So you're a really tiny, uh, weak character who's always one hit away from dying, but you're also extremely nimble and can totally hold your own in combat. You can use the A button to pick up items that are on the ground. You can use the B button to call up your inventory. Um, and you can also dash and run as well. So you're basically a very nimble character, uh, but you're also extremely weak. Uh, in our game, uh, every time you take damage, you start bleeding. So even the smallest enemy just pricking you will actually kill you over time if you don't deal with it. And you can deal with it by potions, or you can deal with it by uh, finding fire, putting your sword into the fire and actually cauterizing the wound. Uh, there's a whole bunch of like flora and fauna in the game as well, so sometimes the, the flora can actually help you with healing. Um, you also need to eat. Uh, basically, you need to survive. Uh, and the way that you survive is uh, by learning how to you know, deal with enemies, but also by being very attentive and, and exploring the world with purpose. Very interesting. It, I like that you guys are playing a lot with lighting and dark here. Yeah, can you it's talk a, a little bit about that? Because the character is small, and because like we're we're really trying to go for uh, you know that sense of scale and that sense of scope, and also the sense of of atmosphere, uh, we have to spend a lot of time trying to figure out exactly how to make a character of that size, but also make sure that everything is extremely clear, that you still even get a bit of personality to the wanderer himself or herself, um, and in the end, you're always going to be kind of a. a you're always going to need to think about what you're doing. You're always going to need to learn by doing because we're not, there's no text in the game. There's no tutorials in the game. There's no hand holding. There's no. No uh, text anywhere. No, no text anywhere. That's very well, cool. I mean, like, there's like, like little, like, number. You, you can know, you need to know how many of certain items you have and stuff, right. but there's right. no real, uh, you know, there's no dialogue. All of the story and lore of the game is learned through exploring and through discovering the environment. Uh, if you hit down on your D-pad, you can pull out your lantern, and that might scare away the bats. But you do have a limited amount of resource on the lantern as well. Cool, yeah, so this seems very much like, like Sword and Sorcery, your last game, where you just kind of dive in and explore and figure out what's going on. Yeah, and a big part of that exploration is also just, you know, being in the depths and, and seeing the tilt shift and watching enemies kind of materialize out of the blur. But it's also about, like, you know, we're, we're a really trying to make a, a, a game that can be explored and enjoyed, but we're also trying to make a game that's about, you know, aesthetics and, and about Jim's music as well. Cool. Yeah, Jim, do you want to talk a little bit about the music for, for Below? Uh, yeah, well, um, this game's a lot different than anything else I've done. It's gonna, it seems, it's, it's sort of turning out uh, a lot more ambient. You know, there's not as many sort of songy songs like with hooks and things like that, like I did on um, on the last game, Sword and Sorcery. So, yeah, I think it's just really important that uh, you know that like the ambience is right, and that it that the music will just sort of tell this the sort of same story and the same narrative. I just ran into spikes and yeah, down. You got to be careful with the spikes. I don't have a song for the spikes yet, but. <laughs> So maybe that's why. The lament of his life. Yeah, I need a, some spike rock. But uh, but yeah, you know, it's it's. Um, I've never worked on a game like this. This is like a huge thrill for me. Like the pace is way different, you know. Um, so it's basically just trying to get the right atmosphere. I, I think that it's just going to be so important. Um, and you know, we've done so much work, but I sort of feel like we're just scratching the surface. Yeah. And I've, yeah. I've made like a ton of tracks. And you know we're just really trying to figure out what works, what doesn't. Like, what do we want people to feel? Um, and that's just really important to us. So, 
Um, I think a lot of it's still up for grabs, but where we have the game right now, I'm super excited and super cool. Pumped so for it. when when does Blow come out? Uh, we don't have any real info on the release. It's coming to Steam and Xbox One. Okay. Um, and right, I'm sure readers remember this from the Xbox One conference. Yeah, last yeah. Year. So was yeah, we were, it was a thrilling experience for us to have Phil walk out on stage in a cappy shirt and, yeah. and talk about roguelikes. And the interesting thing is that Phil is actually like a roguelike fan, and uh, he he nerded out with me at E3 about oh, roguelikes. Awesome. Yeah, <laughs> um, but he's, oh. it it also is great for us that uh, now that we're working on the game with ID at Xbox. Uh, it gives us an opportunity to bring it to Steam players as well, which cool. is for us is super exciting. So to have you know like a great chance to put it on console and also a great chance to put it on PC is uh, it's it's a, it's an amazing opportunity for us, and we're super excited to you know get the chance to to show it to PC players. So is but, everything as we explore? Is everything? Uh, uh Manually generated. Yeah, it's procedural stuff all this. All the stuff that we're seeing right now, except for the kind of the island and its space, uh, is entirely procedurally generated. And we oh, spent okay. a really long time trying to make sure that the game didn't look or feel procedurally generated. It felt natural and like a space, like an actual world. Gotcha. Um, so it's all being all the single screen dungeons in the entire game are procedurally generated. Okay. Um, but there are other areas that you'll find that are. Uh, the kind of like signpost areas that are the set pieces that are where you will discover the lore and the story and maybe the purpose of why you're even in the dungeon. I like that and readers might not notice this or maybe you'll think something's wrong with the camera but the focus is actually going out. Yeah and it's actually it's actually doing real tilt shift. Tilt shift is basically an, a, an, a focal effect where a thin slice is in focus and everything out of uh, that thin slice falls out of focus very quickly. What that does is it lets us both uh, ensure that the player is really focused on the wanderer, but it also creates the mystery and the miniaturization effect that we want. And so anything in that thin slice is going to be uh, in focus, even if it's a really tall thing that, that you know reaches up into the sky. But as you walk away from it, it'll fall more and more out of focus. And that's a big part of the aesthetic of the game. It, Falls in line with the like playing a small character, having the camera really zoomed out, having the single screen dungeons. Uh, it, it's all kind of like fitting into that uh, work that we've done to make sure that the aesthetics also fit the gameplay as well. Cool, awesome. Well, thanks so much, guys. So this is below coming to Xbox One and Steam eventually. Yeah, not it's not years and years not away years. for sure. Okay. And now that it's out in the open, we'll be talking a ton more about it. Okay, the cool. website is whatliesbelow.com, where cool. you can check it out at capybaragames.com as well. Very cool. And we'll have a ton more information and more videos and screenshots and all the all the things that look pretty. Cool. Uh, real yeah. soon. This really looks like no other game out there, even on the show floor here. It's like below is is very interesting and, and you're and poetically going to end by dying on the dying note all right great thanks guys this thanks a lot low. jason ether one is a adventure game about dementia now if you've never had a friend or family member struggle with dementia it's it's really horrifying they lose their own sense of self they lose their memory they deteriorate it's very 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 harsh and very emotionally draining